Hello, dear viewers! Today I'll take you through the process of creating a large decorative bowl I've named Golden Oasis. For this base, I've chosen a spherical plaster mold. Feel free to comment if you're interested in the creation of plaster molds. I'm using white architectural clay with brocks, ideal for larger forms. To start, I need to roll out a clay slab about 5 mm thick. To expedite the process, I flatten the clay with my palms. Once the sheet reaches approximately 1.5 mm, I use guides and a rolling pin to achieve the perfect thickness. The guides ensure the rolling pin doesn't go below the desired thickness. For greater efficiency, I recommend periodically flipping and rotating the slab by 45 degrees. Through this process, I work on a dense fabric spread over the table to prevent the clay from sticking to the work surface. I cover the plaster mold with a clay sheet. Due to the clay's pliable nature, it easily takes the mold's shape. Where excess clay occurs, I gently press it against the mold and slightly lift the mass downward to cover as much of the mold surface as possible. Applying even pressure Pay close attention to the thickness of the clay sheet, maintaining uniformity across the entire surface is crucial. Once the shaping is complete, I smooth out any small bumps and perform the final compression. For this, I use plastic card or a rubber rib, ensuring a polished finish. Next, I proceed to build up any missing fragments along the edges of the mold. Using another clay sheet of the same thickness, I cut it into pieces and attach them to the areas they need reinforcement. When joining two clay pieces together, I always score both bonding surfaces first, followed by the application of slip. A clay-based adhesive made by diluting the same clay we use with water and mixing it to a creamy consistency. It's essential to ensure the thickness remains uniform. If there is any build-up, I gently press down to thin out that section. Repeat this process around the entire circumference, covering all the different areas. After covering the entire hemisphere with a uniform layer of clay, I smooth out the surface by consolidating all the attached pieces. A metal rib with serrated edges works perfectly for these manipulations. As if shaving off a small amount of clay, I constantly change the direction of the stroke to enhance the smoothing efficiency. 
This procedure helps eliminate most irregularities from the surface as it shaves off bumps and fills in indentations. I'm not too concerned about achieving a perfectly smooth surface at this point because we'll need some texture for the upcoming decoration. To create the ball, I'll need two identical hemispheres. Since my hemispheres are quite moist and prone to deformation, I use a prox appropriately sized pool and a newspaper roll to support the shape of the structure. As you can see, the edges of one of the hemispheres are slightly wider and bent outward aiding in a more secure bounding of the two parts. The hemispheres are ready to be joined. Don't forget to use a generous amount of slip and score marks for a secure bond. This ensures a reliable connection between the two halves. We are now connecting the two parts. I use a damp sponge to press the protruding part of the hemisphere into the other, reinforcing the connecting seam. During the process, gravity may cause slight deformation, but since the sphere is now sealed and some air remains inside, it won't collapse. To adjust the shape, you can use flat wooden tools, gently tapping to align our sphere. I also smooth out the seam area with a serrated metal rib. Our sphere now looks uniform and we can proceed to decorate the surface. For this step, I'll need another clay slab, slightly thicker this time and adequately dried. To ensure the slab is adequately dried but not too hard, try gently bending it. It should not bend easily but also not crumble. This state of clay is referred to as leather heart. Afterward, cut the sheet into strips of the same thickness using a stick. Once a sufficient number of strips are prepared, cut them one by one into even smaller squares. However, Avoid making too many as they may dry out during the decoration process. When a portion of the embellishments is ready, we proceed to the decoration. I create a semi-circular indentation on each square by using any tool of your preferred size with a rounded base. Carefully make a small depression in each to enhance the decorative effect, I leave small cracks at the edges. Next, attach the prepared and glued element to the sphere. To expedite the process, I apply adhesive and score marks to a small section, not too small but not too overly large, to prevent the slip from drying too quickly.
Layer by layer, I attach the squares to the surface, maintaining a checkboard bottom. While this process is quite relaxing, it does take some time. I recommend patience and good background music. When half of the sphere is decorated, it can be removed from the supporting wall to continue the work. To avoid damaging the surface, use a pre-made and bisque fired ceramic pot. This will facilitate the sculpture's movement and simplify the loading process into the kiln. Cover the remaining part of the sphere with decoration. When only about a third remains at the top, I suggest creating an opening. Initially, I make a small hole and then step by step I shape the opening according to my design, leaving it rough and jagged. After this, complete the decoration up to the very top. The sculpture is complete and ready for slow drying process and the initial bisque firing. Now the sculpture is sturdy and prepared for glazing. I use a golden metallic glaze applying it with a brush in four layers. Always refer to the instructions and follow the guidelines on the packaging when using any glaze. As per my design, I cover the interior with gold, leaving the outside in a white matte finish for con contrast. Send it into the kiln for a high temperature firing. I am very pleased with the result obtained. I hope you enjoyed my video. Feel free to ask any question in the comments, give likes and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, bye bye!